Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on graphing functions utilizing calculus. Before we look at our example problem, I'd like to take a few moments of your time to cover a few questions which you may have. First, how do you graph utilizing calculus? Well, you combine all of your existing knowledge, such as how to find intercepts with the first and second derivative tests. So now, you might be asking, what is the first derivative test? Well, the first derivative test, as the name implies, utilizes a function's first derivative to find critical numbers, open intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing, and extrema. Critical numbers occur when f prime of x is zero or doesn't exist. Extrema are either relative or absolute maximum or minimum points on a graph that occur at critical numbers. In order to find them, you need to determine the intervals upon which a function is increasing or decreasing. In order to do so, you determine whether f prime is positive, which means that the function is increasing, or f prime is negative, which means that the function is decreasing. So, let's cover a few scenarios which allow us to determine whether a critical point is a maximum or a minimum. First, if f prime is decreasing on the left and increasing on the right, then the critical point is a minimum. Second, if f prime is increasing on the left and decreasing on the right, then the critical point is a maximum. Third, in any other situation, the critical point is neither a maximum nor a minimum. Now, let's discuss the second derivative test. Much like the first derivative test, this test is utilized to determine certain properties about a function over open intervals. In this case, it is used to determine the concavity of a function. Concavity determines how a function is curving over an open interval. In order to perform this test, similar to the first derivative test, we need to determine whether f double prime is either zero or not existent. However, the points that we identify by looking for these are not critical numbers. Instead, let's call these potential points of inflection. So, let's cover the testing criteria, the first of which if f double prime is positive, then you are concave up in that um, interval. Second, if f double prime is negative, then your function is concave down over that interval. Now, once you have determined the concavity over an open interval, you can find points of inflection by looking at where your concavity changes. At that point of change is where you have a point of inflection. In addition, I feel it's a bit easier to understand how you will utilize this information when graphing functions by seeing concavity in action. So, I've provided an image here that shows concave up when decreasing and increasing, as well as concave down when decreasing or increasing. So, now let's discuss our example problem, which is sketch the graph of f of x equals x e to the 2x using its domain, symmetry, intercepts, asymptotes, and the first and second derivative tests. The process to solve this problem is, first, determine its domain and symmetry, second, determine the function's intercepts and find its asymptotes. Third, utilize the first derivative test to identify the open intervals over which the function is increasing or decreasing and locate extrema. Fourth, utilize the second derivative test to identify the open intervals over which the function is concave up or down and locate points of inflection. Fifth, combine all of this information and sketch the graph. For step one, we need to determine the domain and symmetry of our function. So, let's start with domain, which is all real numbers or, in interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. This is because no matter what input is utilized, our function is always defined. We will always have some output. Thus, our domain has to be negative infinity to infinity. So, let's now discuss symmetry. First, for x-axis symmetry, 
we will substitute negative y for y in our function. No matter what we do to this, we will never get back to our original function of x e to the 2x. So, we do not have our x-axis symmetry. Second, for y-axis symmetry, we will substitute negative x for x in our function. Again, there's absolutely nothing we can do that will get us back to our original function. So, we do not have y-axis symmetry either. Finally, for origin symmetry, we substitute negative x and negative y for x and y, respectively. Even in this case, again, there's nothing we can possibly do which will get us back to our original function. So, we do not have origin symmetry either, or any symmetry for this graph overall. For step two, we need to determine intercepts and find asymptotes. So let's begin by looking at intercepts. First, let's find our y-intercept by evaluating f of 0. Because our original function was x e to the 2x, this will evaluate to 0. Thus, we have a y-intercept at 0, 0. In addition, if we attempt to find an x-intercept by setting our function equal to 0, we will see that the only way that this can become 0 is by making the x on the outside 0, which means our point will be 0, 0, no matter what, for both our y and x-intercepts. For asymptotes, we have to consider what possible outputs or inputs our function can have. When we look for our horizontal asymptote, we will find that it is y equals 0, since this is an exponential function and it has not been shifted up or down. However, because we have no points at which we are undefined, we have no vertical or slant asymptotes. For step three, we are going to utilize the first derivative test. So the first thing we need to do is define the first derivative of our function, which would be f prime equals e to the 2x times 2x plus 1. So now, we need to find our critical points. In order to do so, we need to find where f prime of x is either 0 or does not exist. Well, we know that f prime of x is defined over all real numbers. So, the only point at which a critical number exists will occur when we set 2x plus 1 equal to 0, which will give us that x equals negative 1 half. So, now we can determine the open intervals over which our function is increasing or decreasing, and locate extrema. To do so, we will split our function along two open intervals. The first is negative infinity to negative one-half. Here, we can see that if we drop in a value less than one-half, or negative one-half, such as negative one, we get a negative output. Thus, our function is decreasing over this interval. The second interval is negative in one-half to infinity. Here, we see that if we drop in a value more than negative one-half, such as zero, we're going to get a positive output. Thus, our function is increasing over this interval. This means that we have a relative minimum at negative one-half. So, we will drop negative one-half into the original function and see that our relative minimum is located at negative one-half, negative one over two e. For step four, we will utilize the second derivative test. So, much like the first or last step, the first thing we need to do is find the second derivative, which is f double prime is equal to four e to the two x times x plus 1. So now we can find potential points of inflection in the same manner that we used in the last step, except this time we will utilize the second derivative. Doing so, we will find that our potential point of inflection is at x equals negative 1. Finally, we will determine concavity and find points of inflection by again splitting our function along two open intervals. The first interval is negative infinity to negative 1. Using a test point of negative 2, we will find that our output would be negative. Thus, this makes the interval concave down. The second 
interval is negative 1 to infinity. Again, using a test point of 0, we will find that our output would be positive, thus making this interval concave up. So, now we will determine what our point of inflection at x equals negative 1 is by evaluating our original function at negative 1. Doing so, we will find that our point of inflection is negative 1, negative 1 over e squared. So, now we will combine all of this information to draw our graph. You'll have to forgive me for not drawing it out by hand during this video, but here's what your final result should be. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.